You're watching a segment of The Splash, Greater West Bloomfield's news magazine show. Hello and welcome back to The Splash. I'm Jonathan Jackson. And my guest on the show this week is Senator Mike Kowal from White Lake. He serves as Michigan's 15th State Senate District, which includes us here in West Bloomfield. So, Senator, I want to thank you for being here today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jonathan. Well, so talk to me today a little bit about you. You know, you, how long have you served in the Senate? Well, I went into the Senate in 2010, and uh, I'll serve until 2018, and I'll be term limited out at that point in time. Okay. Before that, I was in the I was in the state house from ninety nine or ninety eight. I was uh, elected and served till two thousand and two, and did some work around the world. I worked in China for a little bit and worked in uh, Mexico oh, for a while. Traveling the world, uh, yeah. Oaxaca, Mexico, yeah. interesting place. Uh, uh. And uh, from there, I ended up coming back and being supervisor in White Lake and oh. ran for the Senate after that. So been around. Yeah, and you were from White Lake too, so you know that's right. That's well, it made it easier. Uh -huh. but, you know, we were doing a lot of traveling, and before that, I spent 38 years in the family construction business. So it's this is not first uh, career choices actually. <laughs> <laughs> But you have a very deep history here in Michigan. You, you know, you've grown and grown up in Detroit. You've, yes. you know, you've been around all the state. You know, and not just in White Lake, but like I said, Detroit and other areas. What would you say you love best about you know Michigan here as a state? Well, what I love best about it is the lakes here in the in in our area, mm -hmm. West, here West, West Bloomfield, Bloomfield West right. Bloomfield, and White Lake, and Highland, and Milford, and all this. To me, this is uh, this is the best kept secret in in the world, and Fortunately, you know, people are beginning to realize that, but that's, you know, just makes it more crowded. And, but for people that have been out here a long time, it's, uh, there's some changes that take place, but th I think they're all for the better. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's talk a little bit about legislation. I mean, you sure. are in the Senate. Um, you know, this has been a hard month, I think, for our nation. You know, we've had multiple civilian shootings and even law enforcement shootings um, in Dallas. And you are working hard to make sure that sort of situation doesn't happen here in Michigan. Can you tell me a bit about what well, you're we're, doing? We're trying, you know, we've had shootings, individual police officers. Exactly. We lost one here in West Bloomfield Patrick here, O'Rourke. Patrick, yes, Patrick, Patrick O'Rourke. And we know how devastating that is, not only to the family, but to the, uh, to the community. And it's not just the community of West Bloomfield, it's all the surrounding communities. Because all of us that have been involved in, in law enforcement to some degree, um, there's a brother sisterhood there. Whether it's police, fire, rescue, you're the first ones on the scene when something devastating happens. And we, you know, we wanna make sure they're protected and they have all the tools they need. And right now with the friction and, and the high stress level, mm -hmm. we're reminding people, let's have a little bit of patience, let's be respectful for each other, you know, both the police and the, and the communities as well. And we wanna make sure that, uh, that everybody's safe and everyone goes home at the end of the day and, and you know, is there to take yeah. care of their families. No, we were talking earlier about that system of respect, you know, from, you know, not just civilians, but also officers as well. That mutual respect yeah, can help, absolutely. you know, mend a lot of bridges. And, uh, you know, that's just something we need to be, you know, aware of that at all times. Well, so. like you were saying, your mom taught you that when yeah, you were exactly. younger, and my mom and dad taught me that, and, and, he, and they were there to remind me when I didn't. Mm -hmm. And it was swift and sure punishment for that, <laughs> for that if, I, if, I, if I wasn't respectful. Exactly. And now my my children are teaching it to their kids, and my grandkids are growing up with that same mindset. Yeah. But we ju we just need to do that as a community as a whole, and just just to be patient. You know, being uh, being in law enforcement, and especially today, mm -hmm. is an extremely difficult job. Yeah. With all the new rules, regulations, um, all the different groups that we work with. Exactly. I mean, we're we're right here in West Bloomfield. We're a melting pot. Yes, we there's are. every every, every ethnic group you can imagine, mm -hmm. and you don't have to go far. Just drive down Orchard Lake Road and look at all the restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know that everybody's here, and it's a good thing. Yeah, it is. And we just need to be cognizant of the fact that um, we're all a little bit different, but yet we're all Americans and we're all here to, you know, take advantage of what's here, you know, constitutionally for us. So I, I'm just out there encouraging that. Now, Senator, let's talk a little bit about some more legislation. Yeah, another thing you're trying to pass is an anti-hacking law. 
right. for automobiles. So, you know, today's automobiles have a lot of technology in them, almost as much as our computers or our phones, you know. And that's makes them, you know, almost easily ac accessible, you know, with hacking. So what inspired you to take on this challenge? And well, what got me interested is we're working on the uh, autonomous vehicle mm -hmm. legislation right now, and that's the wave of the future for the automotive industry in, right. in our area. And uh, the there was a report that came out that talked about the Jeep Grand Cherokees being hacked into, and being that I drive one, that got my attention immediately. Yeah, hopefully it did, yes. <laughs> and we started researching it and found out that your uh, Ford Taurus has more computers in it right now than some of the 747 equipment of airplanes that are flying. Unbelievable. It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable the amount of the gigabytes that are in these, in these cars. And as we go forward that we start clicking into full autonomous mode, the last thing you want somebody doing is hacking into your vehicle while you're doing 70 miles an hour down I-75. Exactly. Because yeah. once you begin to trust the systems, you're going to really rely on them to be correct. I was just in a test with the U.S. military and MDOT. In fact, uh, Lieutenant Governor and I rode in the lead truck. Uh, the governor was behind us in another uh, very heavy military vehicle. These are large semi-trucks. We did our first platooning experiment mm -hmm. on the roads. and that. One of the things that my legislation I did back in, uh, uh, in 13 made possible that we could experiment on the highways. And it came off flawlessly, but it's an incorporated system with connected streets, of which I'm happy to say Oakland County and our road commission is head and shoulders above everybody else, not only here in Michigan, but in the country. They are doing a wonderful job. They yeah. are doing an outstanding job. But we're working in conjunction with all that so that accidents like what Brooks Patterson got into mm -hmm. never would have happened. Yeah. So as as these vehicles are all talking to one another and to the infrastructure and, and making sure that we're moving along safely, the last thing we need is somebody, you know, disrupting that, that frequency. Okay. No, exactly, yeah. And also, too, with these automobiles today, like I was mentioning, the technology in them, the processors, the computers, that's all advancing so quickly. I mean, if you think about it, honestly, we, we, uh, we need to be more careful when we're in the vehicles, not only just, you know, from them being hacked, but when we're inside them as well. I mean, sure. it's so easy to get distracted and to get, you know, un unfocused on the road, and I think that's another thing to worry about as well. Well, we've and been talking to the kids in the school, don't text and drive. Exactly. In fact, I just chastised one of my staff people today because he, I think he was texting me while he was driving, and I reminded him not to. Automobile safety. So yeah. he called me later on and said, I'm safe and in the office. But we just have to, you know, be very careful. You're, you're not operating your grandpa's car anymore. Nope. These systems are highly sophisticated, and they need your full-time attention. Now, as we move into, the, into this autonomous mode, that will take over some of those operations of the vehicle, but we still have a ways to go yet. Yeah, true. But you are concerned about safety. That's one of your you know, biggest platforms as Senator. You protection of safety, not only for our officers, for our, in our vehicles, but you're also involved in a lot with uh, veterans, too, and making sure oh, yeah. they're taken care of and protected. And just even last th this weekend, right, uh, you had an event, a, a this, lapel pinning ceremony? last weekend, we were up in Oscoda, mm -hmm. and they had, uh, actually they had helicopters there from the Vietnam era, and they were flying people around in them. It must have brought back some memories. A lot right? of the veterans, uh, it brought back a lot of emotions and memories. Of course. Yeah. We put uh, pins on uh, al almost 200 people. Oh, wow. We had the partners who were in from Washington, D.C., a couple of staff sergeants and some officials were there with us. And um, my uh, staff person, Lynn, was uh, there as well hmm. in helping out, making sure everything was running smoothly. But we did see a lot of tears and uh, a lot of hugs. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's. Uh, it's a very emotional experience, and w th those of us that are old enough that remember the Vietnam War know that uh, it wasn't the most popular thing in the world. No, no. And when the veterans came home, they weren't thanked. They were called baby killers, and they were, you know, not treated very well. So we're trying to make up with that, although it's 50 years later. True. But also, I mean, you, like I 
you're involved with them. You want to make sure that they're taken care of and that they are able to live a comfortable, sure. if, you know, at least as, as comfortable as possible. Well, we passed know, legislation back. earlier, uh, what was last year, that uh, if you're fully disabled, that's 100% full disability, mm -hmm. you no longer have to pay property taxes on your, on your residence in Michigan. The benefits of that is unbelievable, you know, that's, that, that eases up a lot of stress and worry sure. on their mind that's already taken up by other issues. So. Well, when you get to a point where you, you can buy your medication or food exactly. or pay your taxes, you, don't, you, you have to live. Mm -hmm. So we don't want them going without. They served our country, they served honorably, yeah. and we're ex extremely proud and thankful for what they did. Yeah. Well, that's good. And even so close to Fourth of July, you know, it's just good to remember our veterans and uh, not just, you know, of course now, but all throughout the years. Well, so. we say every day is Veterans Day. That's right, exactly, exactly. Well, Senator, too, while, while I have you here, I wanted to ask a little bit about, you know, more about you. What do you love most about being in the Senate? I mean, I know your wife is actually involved in legislating, so you, your family is very heavily involved. In, well, you know, as I was telling you earlier, you know, I, I spent 38 years in the construction business with mm -hmm. my family, and then I got involved in helping out Brooks Patterson, and one thing led to another, and Soon enough, yeah. before long I was running for state <laughs> house, and to my surprise, I won. <laughs> and we, uh, I got into Lansing. And I remember looking at the, at the ceiling, thinking, okay, now what do you do? Yeah. And you really have to uh, pay attention to what your colleagues are doing, and there has to be a lot of trust amongst the legislators, because trying to gather all the information there is like drinking water out of a fire hose. There's just a Too lot much. coming at you. Too much, yeah. So and before long, my wife got interested, and she ran for the county commission and won that. And I, uh, uh, I did. Uh, I was in the state house for a while, and then I left there, and I worked in Mexico and China, and uh, had some interesting experiences. And you were telling me earlier too. You and your wife were the. I believe the only two, the, the first ever couple we're the, who we're was the first, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. We we're the first couple to be elected and hold office at the same, same time, time yeah. and and married, and, and we're still married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is good as <laughs> which well. Is a good which thing. is good as well, yes, yes. For, 42 years now, so That's it's, awesome. yeah, it's yeah, a beautiful thing. Year, yeah. Now, is anybody else in your family involved? Or like My brother is running for supervisor in White Lake Township. What do you know? Um, it's, it runs in the family. And huh? he, <laughs> he got the bug, and um, but it, it, it comes from a service-based business. Mm -hmm. We did that for years uh, privately, mm -hmm. and when you see uh, opportunities to help the public out and move it forward um, it's it's almost a natural progression for us yeah. so we're, we're up, I'm very proud of my brother he's gonna do a good job and my wife does an outstanding job uh, here at the county which now has a 3.8 unemployment rate that's very good you know, Brooks very has been good. working really hard, hard on yeah. that yeah we got a great sheriff Mike Bouchard sheriff, yep mm -hmm. we got some great people here and we're we all try to support each other through various methods. You know, I do it at the at the uh, si you know state, state level, city, yep, and yep. and Eileen's working at the at the uh, you know county level, and hopefully Rick will be there at the uh, yeah. local level. Exactly. Well, we appreciate you, and we thank you for all the work that you're doing, as well as in, with your family too. You know, everybody's involved in politics, but you are exactly you know one person who's done a lot of work for veterans, like I said, and a lot of work for people here in our district. So thank you so much, Senator. You're more than welcome. Happy to do it. it. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, folks, Senator Mike Kowal, we want to thank him again for joining us today and to continue to support him and, of course, all the work that he does in our Senate. Thanks again, Senator. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Thanks for watching a segment of The Splash. To catch the entire show or other segments, watch us on Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T Channel 99. Or look us up online at thesplash.tv and listen to us on WBLD 89.3 The Lakes FM.